Hello and welcome to my channel ACORMRCP. I am Dr. Oporajita Roy and through this channel I bring to you exclusive tips and tricks that will help you pass your MRCP in the very first attempt. In today's video we are going to talk about the high yield topics of respiratory system. So let's get started. If you are not familiar with these set of videos, I would suggest that you also watch my other video that talks about the high yield topics of endocrinology. Now coming back to the respiratory system, let's start with the basics of respiratory physiology. Respiratory physiology is a very important topic, especially for basic medical sciences for MRCP part 1. Transfer factor among this is RCP's favorite topic. Among the things that you have to know about transfer factor in details is KCO and DLCO. You have to know the difference between these two and what are the causes of increased and decreased KCO and DLCO. Flow volume curves, very very important especially for MRCP part 2. Remember in MRCP part 2 you get image based questions. So flow volume curves are very very important for MRCP2 image based questions. Your concepts have to be very very clear as to which curve represents which disease. Let me know in the comment section below if you would want me to make detailed videos on it because this is a topic you cannot afford to miss. And lastly oxygen dissociation curves. This is something we have been learning since our physiology days. We have to know about what are the causes of right and left shifts of oxygen dissociation curves okay now let's look at an mrcb style question from the topic of respiratory physiology read this question very very carefully and then try to answer it before you look at the solution the reason why i have kept this question is because i want you to be aware of the causes of a raised dlco now we all know that pulmonary hemorrhage is a very important cause of raised dlco and the common causes of underlying alveolar hemorrhage would be vaginous granulomatosis and good pasture syndrome. However, there are other important causes of raised DLCO which are common MRCP questions that include polycythemia, ASD and chronic bronchitis. Remember emphysema is a cause of decreased DLCO. The next topic that we would discuss is obstructive lung disease like asthma and COPD. You cannot enter the examination center without reading NICE guidelines for COPD. You have to know about the acute management, every word of the NICE guideline as well as chronic management. Have to know about the gold classification for severity, indications of NIV, very very important. If you also prepare for interviews for NHS, this is something again they'll always ask you. What are the indications of NIV in COPD? This is a very common question, even for interviews, for training or non-training jobs, and of course, very popular in MRCP. LTOT, long-term oxygen therapy, again, indications and contraindications, very important. Lung volume reduction surgeries, indications, contraindication, when lung transplantation is preferred, all of these are popular MRCP theory questions. Again, read the question very carefully and try to answer it before looking at the solution. The answer for this question is option number three. This is something you have to remember by heart, very, very important. PO2, when it is less than or equal to 7.3, PO2 less than 8 with any feature of edema, pulmonary hypertension, polycythemia with a hematocrit of more than 55%. You can forget about this one, but these two are extremely important. You have to, have to, have to remember. This is another question from COPD. Read this question carefully before we get into the details of the solution. Okay, so the correct answer is... Lung volume reduction surgeries work better in upper lobe predominant emphysema. Keep these guidelines as a part of your preparation if you want to score good marks in MRCP. So these are a few points that you have to know about lung volume reduction surgeries. That the volume is decreased only by 20 to 30%. Heterogeneous diseases with 
apical target areas are preferred for lung volume reduction surgeries. The FEV1 has to be more than 20% predicted and it is preferred at an older age, 60 to 70 years. Now let's look at the conditions where we prefer a lung transplantation. Where there is a diffuse disease without specific target areas. More advanced disease, if there is an element of hypercarbia, obviously if the patient has pulmonary hypertension in a younger patient and if the patient has underlying alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Coming to asthma, again, please do not enter the examination hall without reading the NICE guidelines for diagnosis and treatment of asthma. They also ask one by one what are the indications for ICU admission and what are the discharge criteria. Again, this is a very favorite topic for training and non-training interviews for the NHS. This is a simple one. You will be able to answer it if you read the NICE guidelines thoroughly. The correct answer in this situation is add a LABA. If you are liking this video, Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and press the bell notification to never miss an update. Now let's talk about pulmonary embolism. This is an absolute RCP favorite. You have to know the treatment algorithm like the back of your hand. And these are some other topics that I have listed here where you can expect questions from the topic of pulmonary embolism. However, I want you to understand that RCP is famous for pulmonary embolism question on specific scenarios. For MRCP part 2, they will give you definite clinical scenarios with very close options to choose from. And it will depend on the candidate's clinical judgment to choose the right option for treatment or investigations from the series of options given. In the next slide, we will look at a very similar scenario that you can expect in your MRCP theory exam. These are the type of questions the MRCP theory exam is notorious for and these are the make or break that makes a difference between passing and failing. Read this question very carefully. The options are very confusing and choose your answer smartly and wisely. Now let's look at the question first. It talks about a 50 year old man with an underlying prostate cancer and he has sudden onset shortness of breath and a unilateral swollen cough. All these point towards a diagnosis of pulmonary embolism. This patient is in shock and has an ABG done that shows severe hypoxia which further strengthens your underlying diagnosis of pulmonary embolism. The question, however, asks not about the diagnosis, but about the next best step. If you look at the options carefully, they are divided into two. They talk about a few more investigations like CTPA, chest x-ray and D-dimer. Or they ask you to choose from treatment options like altiplase, or IV fluids. Now, altiplase can never be given unless we confirm that it is PE. So, this option is out straight away. We cannot thrombolize a patient where PE is not confirmed. Chest x ray, D dimer, and CTPA all are reasonable options, all are reasonable investigations. However, in classic MRCP style, the patient is in shock. So here the right answer is IV fluids. Before doing any other thing, before doing any other investigation, you have to have to fluid resuscitate the patient. So here the correct option is IV fluids. These are only a few topics on respiratory system that you can expect questions from in your MRCP exam. Please let me know in the comment section below if you are finding these topics useful so that I continue to make more videos not only on respiratory but other high yield topics on other subjects as well. Till then, stay safe, keep studying and ace your MRCP.